go. I have no map, no compass, no driver. Precious little information to show. It can be hard in this life to make decisions. And it's an altogether common thing to fail. But as I survey my current situation, I decided to just go ahead and say, there is no one way, there is no foolproof plan, no faithful final chance. I just wake up each day, do the best I can, and when I hear the music dance. I confess I get the feelings quite often, seems sometimes I hardly ever get it right. Life's about just facing fear and trying So I just point my little bow towards the light There is no one way, there is no foolproof plan No faithful final chance I just wake up each day, do the best I can And then I hear the music dance So whatever your face is, just one of the Welcome to Unity of Springfield's Facebook Live. This is Sunday, 
July 12th. I can't believe it's already July 12th. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, but it's good to have you on here this morning. Again, I'm always so grateful that we have this opportunity to be able to connect in this way through Facebook Live. And um, we always look forward to your comments um, as we go through our service this morning. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We're going to get started with one of our favorites, and that is Mr. Mitch Brashears. Good morning to everyone. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. You know, I was going to kind of start off as I, I realize I've often done like, man, what a crazy week it's been, but aren't we all just having crazy weeks these days? I mean, it, or these weeks, it's it's just like there's there's no normality anymore. So we're all just trying to roll through. So I hope you guys are doing good. I'm going to give you a namaste right off the top. Namaste to you. And uh, goodness gracious, I hope you're all doing well. My family's doing well. I hope you're doing well and bless you. So we are totally excited uh, this morning because we have Daniel Neymar, who's going to be singing for us this morning. And we're so, so grateful and thankful for that. Um, Daniel, if you're watching, can you just like put your fingers in your ears for just a second? Like just close it up. I'll give you a thumbs up when you're done or when I'm done. So if you can just, yeah, just, just plug it up just right there. Okay, cool. Dude, Daniel Neymar singing. I love Daniel Neymar. I love playing with him. I love hearing his voice. I love hearing, hearing him do everything. Remember the first time you heard the Water CD? Oh my gosh. One Power. Oh. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. So super pumped about Daniel. Okay, Daniel, you can you can take your fingers out. It's okay now. Take your fingers out. No, we were just talking about how you know how you know music is good and. You know, new thought, right on, bro. That's, that, that's good. All right. Well, let's get on to our uh, mission statement. Our mission is to encourage and inspire spiritual and personal growth by empowering each other to be authentically all that we came here to be. Authentically all that we came here to be. Yeah, love our mission statement. And then our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Our daily word and our, uh, our daily word is legacy of love. And our affirmation is, I am making a positive difference in the world today. All right, let's try that again. I am making a positive difference in the world today. A universal wish of the human spirit is to make a difference in the world, to have one's time and energy count in a positive, lasting way. For our soul satisfaction to be complete, we want to be remembered for our contributions that brought solutions in everyday matters, for our creativity that brought beauty for its own sake, and most of all, for the love we have brought to others. One of Jesus' legacies given to us was the simple message that God's love is ours. His message and his life changed the world for the better forever. We live knowing that sharing divine love is the most important, lasting, and influential gift we can give. Because Christ within is our mentor, love is our legacy too. Our scripture is 1 Corinthians 13.1. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Once again, our affirmation is, I am making a positive difference in the world today. Together, I am making a positive difference in the world today. Let's move into prayer. If you would like to add yourself or a loved one to the prayer list, please call the church at 417-887-2214 and leave a message or email us at ccunity at sbcglobal.net. Prayer has been requested this week for Alex, John, Melissa, Zola, Linda Hilton, on the passing of Lester Hilton. Lester Hilton was a fine soul. I, his smile radiated throughout our congregation and throughout our sanctuary, and we will all miss him. Linda, our thoughts go out to you. Our love goes out to you in this time of need. Bless you, and we love you. So prayer. We pray for all who have lost loved ones to this pandemic and to everyone presently fighting 
for a return to health. Centering ourselves in prayer and connecting our energy one with the other, we affirm the truth that God is everywhere present and loves each and every one of us unconditionally. We forgive those for whom we believe did not treat us fairly or with love. We forgive ourselves for any actions we now see a better way we could have handled the experience. We accept for ourselves and everyone, everyone, healing of mind, body, disease, uneasiness, and fear. For those in our healthcare, our first responders, our employees that are back into work, we surround their families in energy and protection and love and gratitude for all their service. And we pray for our leaders to make right choices to use one of the strengths that God gave us, which is wisdom, and make the right decisions for our community and our loved ones. And we pray that God will help open minds and blossom souls to be aware and to be open to these things. Gratefully, we cheer for all of those who have expressed kindness and charity, and may we choose to continue this Christ-like service. We affirm prosperity for all of us. Thank you, God. Amen. So bless you, Daniel. I look forward to hearing you here. Uh, I hope you plugged your ears for my fanboy thing. Um, I will see you all next week. I love you all. I miss you all. We should have some more live music coming up here shortly. And um, namaste to you. And thank you so much, Mitch. And, you know, Mitch, plug your ears for a moment while I say that we really love you and we appreciate you. We appreciate your humor, your levity that you bring, and we appreciate your kind and compassionate heart. Um, so you can take your, your fingers out of your ears now. <laughs> we were just talking about other things anyway. So we are going to enter into a time of meditation. So I'm going to invite you, as Paul rings the prayer bowl, to take a couple of deep breaths and just allow the energies of the, the tone of the prayer bowl to begin to open up your heart. focus on and remember that there is truly only one presence and one power. And that presence and that power is love. Because God is love. So that out of which we have all come forth into expression in this life is love. Our truest reality is love. That which binds the whole human family and everything is love. Love is the great harmonizer, the great healer. And we, you and I, we are here to be radiant, bold expressions of that love. The love that transcends differences. The love that transcends hurts and wounds. The love, again, that binds us all together as one humanity. This morning we have the opportunity to make a choice for love. To choose in this moment that love is what will guide me in this day. To open ourselves up to saying, who needs my love today, sweet spirit? Who needs my love today? 
So as we move into the silence, I'm gonna invite you just to feel yourself just opening out, allowing this, this pure and perfect love out of which you have come forth to fill your mind, to fill your heart, to fill your body, to fill your soul, and to emanate out from you, to radiate out from you in powerful ways and feel yourself connecting with that same love that is the reality of everyone else around you across our country and across our planet. Just feel the love as we move into the silence. Just feel that love continuing to radiate out from you. And to know that love is the answer, love is the healer, and love is doing its mighty work, its mighty work right now. We claim it, we decree it, and we say, so it is. Amen and amen. And now, as um, Paul was telling us earlier in his class and as um, Mitch was telling us, we are really blessed that Daniel Namod offered to do a couple songs for us for Unity of Springfield. So we're going to be blessed with his first song, and it's about raising a kind child. So enjoy Mr. Daniel Namod. Please. <laughs> okay, hold on. Because if I can't get it this way, I'm going to get it another way for you. <clears throat> Give it a moment because I had to do this differently today. Usually they're uploaded to YouTube and these are an MP4, so I'm having to figure out how to do it a little bit differently. Um, so just give me a moment to get this going. And sometimes it's our internet that causes it. So bear with me, please. Oh, ruh row. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? We're going to try the other song and see if it works while this one downloads again. This is my phone. And I'm going to download that one again. I apologize for this. We may be listening to both of his songs at the end um, if I can't get these to, to play right now. They were playing a little bit ago, so I don't know why they're not doing it now. Let's try this one more time. Okay, so you know what? We are going to allow those to download because they take about seven to 10 minutes to do so. And um, we're gonna, I'm just gonna go on uh, with my talk because you know what? We learn how to be flexible in Unity, don't we? <laughs> I promise you that we will listen to both of Daniel's songs. Uh, and if somebody can tell me ultimately how to get a, an MP4 onto my PowerPoint, please let me know. Okay, so um, I am taking a class. Today's talk is called A Legacy of Love. And I am taking a class on mysticism with Unity Minister Reverend Tony Bain. Mysticism is the spiritual apprehension of knowledge that is inaccessible to the intellect. So it's beyond what we know with our mind and it may be obtained through contemplation and self-surrender. 
Now, um, in this class last week, we did a meditation on clearing uh, past erroneous beliefs and programmings, um, not just of our individual past, but of generational uh, you know, programming and erroneous beliefs. And one of the things that was really interesting to me in this meditation was the journey of going back and the experience of that. So what we did was we started with our own erroneous beliefs, you know, doing some clearing on that. Then we went to our parents and you know, it's pretty easy to go to our parents because we know what programs we have brought forth, what erroneous beliefs we have brought forth. So it was kind of easy to connect with that. We went to our grandparents and we went to the fourth generation, which was our great grandparents. You know, in that I realized that I didn't know a lot about my great grandparents' lives. You know, from history, I can glean some about what life was like then, but not a lot. From there, we went on to 10, 20, 30 generations ago, and I could no longer feel my personal connection to that. Um, the thought that my ancestors were cave people, I just couldn't connect to what life was like um, way back in, in those, you know, in that early, early ancest ancestry. From there, we went into the greater realm, the cosmic realm, into God, into source, into Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, into that that realm of pure beingness where there is no old, you know, old programming or erroneous beliefs, and we just allowed ourselves to be in the midst of the purity of that energy and of that that truth and that healing. And then our next thing that we did was we brought that pure energy back forward with us through all of the generations to, to create that healing, to release those erroneous beliefs and that programming. And we brought it into our present moment. And then we moved that energy out into future generations. And it was really an incredible experience. And there's two reasons that I am sharing this with you today. One is because it was an incredible spiritual practice. And we're going to be talking about various spiritual practices today um, that really had meaning for me. I could feel in those moments, I could literally feel a lot of the dynamics of that old stuff just passing away, just just being eradicated. And, and I could feel the energy of that for generations moving forward. I believe with all my being that right now, my friends, you and I, we are being called to use our spiritual energies, our spiritual powers to help propel us into this next phase of our existence and into what is gonna be coming in future generations. I see so clearly that we are at a tipping point. And the more that we consciously, spiritually participate, the sooner that, that all of this will tip in the direction of our deepest desires. Now, clearly there are things that we have to do in the physical realm, and that is of utmost importance to keep on speaking the truth out loud, to act upon the truth out loud, to take a stand from the level of humanity that binds us all together. But what I'm gonna say is the greatest power that we bring forth, and I believe the most important power that we bring forth in this now moment is through our spirit through conscious participation in impacting the ethers, impacting the substance of God, if you will, which ultimately impacts the whole. And again, that will propel us into the direction that we all, like-minded people, really want to go. And what does that look like for me? That looks like a world that works for everyone. It's a world that treats all people with dignity and love with kindness and compassion. It's a world that works together for the greater good of everyone. It's a world that honors diversity and chooses to see through the eyes of love and to act through the eyes of love. And it's a world in which all people's basic needs are taken care of. And can I get an amen on that? Because that deserves an amen. I believe that if we're listening to this program, that is really what our heart desires. So it's really, really, really important for us to really be doing our spiritual practices and to be open to learning new ones. Uh, and as I said, we're gonna be talking about spiritual practices throughout the talk this morning. The second reason that I wanted to share this meditation with you was because 
um, of the title of today's talk, which is again, Legacy of Love. Um, as I went back even a decade of generations, what I realized was that I really don't know anything about my ancestors from 10 generations ago. I don't know what their beliefs were. I don't know what their life was like. I don't know what their personalities was were like. And that made me think of legacies. And that for the vast, vast majority of us, my friends, 900 years from now, no one is going to know anything about you and I. There will be history written, uh, but it will be about people who did quote unquote big things. Um, you know, with the passing of Lester Hilton, uh, and, and there were some celebrities that have passed in the last few weeks, but um, I really look at Lester and I see that Lester, he did leave a legacy of love. You know, Lester was such a kind man. He always, I said that his smile preceded him. He, he was a, a man that just gave. He wanted to give his heart. He wanted to give his help. Linda was telling me that when they first started going to the gym, Lester was, had been diagnosed with Parkinson's. And so he wasn't real progressed in the disease at this point. So when they first started going to the gym, he was going around helping the other elderly people that needed help to help them get from where, you know, where they were to where they needed to be. He really left this legacy of love. And with these celebrities that have passed on recently, they showed interviews with them before they passed and they asked them, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? And they said, I, you know, I, I hope that I have made a difference in somebody's life and that I have had a positive impact in the world or on the world. And, you know, and I thought, yes, of course we know this, but something clicked deeper for me in this. Um, because I thought the greatest legacy that any of us can leave is the legacy of love, is the legacy of goodness. And do you know why that is the greatest legacy that any of us can leave? It's because it has the greatest impact on all of us. You know, it may not be recognized by everyone in the moment, but when we are expressing love, it is affecting the whole. Because when we are in that place of love, when we are doing what love is guiding us to do, which is spreading kindness and compassion, generating hope, connecting deeper, caring, doing what we can to make a positive difference, when we are in that energy, everything else expands. Everything around us is lifted. We may not see that and other people may, may not consciously feel that, but that is the case. You know, a lot of people have left ama amazing legacies. We have writers and sports people and artists and on and on and on, but their legacies impact a specific group of people. Well, we Then we have those like Jesus and Gandhi and Mother Teresa and Buddha and more, and their legacies impact the whole. Why is that? Because their legacies are legacies of love. They are legacies of oneness. They are legacies of kindness and compassion. So I wanna ask you today, what is the legacy that you want to leave? What is the legacy that you want to, want to leave? And for all intents and purposes for today's talk, I am going to assume that all of us want to leave a legacy of love. I can't imagine that anyone listening to this message would want anything else than to leave a legacy of love. So I am gonna stop right here for a moment because I think Daniel's song um, on a, a kind child really really speaks to that. So let's hope that this is going to play for us. Oh, come on, Daniel. Okay. I'm going to continue to go on, but at the same time, I am going to, um, I am so sorry, you guys, and I am still going to make this work because I'm going to shut down... <laughs> everything in my in my um, Chrome right now so that we can come back and um, I can open it up and I can hopefully get Daniel's songs to come up here. So please forgive me because this was working when I tried it even just before we got online here. Um, so let's do this. Thanks for hanging in there with me for a few minutes, you guys. And um, I'm going to go on with my talk.
and we are going to try to get this to do what it needs to do. Okay, still going, hold on. Sorry, you guys have to see all this, but this is how I have to access, um, have to access uh, Daniel's stuff so I can download it again because I'm committed to getting this for us um, today. And let's see, let's see, da, 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 da. Um, sorry guys, I'd say speak amongst yourselves. <laughs> while I do this, please. Oh, let's see if this works. Oh, Hello, yes. Unity of Springfield. One of my favorite places to sing in the whole world. I just wanted to say hi and sing you some songs. It's been too long. All this cooped up stuff, that's no fun. I'm here in my boys' room, actually, in our home in Orange County, California. My name is Daniel Neymar, if you have no idea who I am. Uh, but I uh, wanted to sing a couple songs for you today. One of them new, one of them a little bit older. And uh, just share with you and uh, send you my love. Tell you I hope you're doing well and tell you I'm thinking of you. Yes. And uh, that I hope to uh, see you in person sometime sooner rather than later. Here's a relatively new song. I'm pretty sure I sang it the last time I was there. Um, but I can't remember for sure. Um, it's on an album called uh, Sing About Love, which came out just towards the end of last year and uh, feels like a long time ago. So here we go. A song based on a true story, a phone call that we got um, from our boy's teacher, Jude, who is now eight. Lately I've been thinking about what motivates me To give a couple dollars to a stranger on the street To hold the door, carry groceries, help a neighbor in need When history repeats itself in headlines every day Solutions never big enough for problems that we face. As a man, as a dad, what difference can I make? Cause I know better than to think I'll be remembered for a favor or a quarter or a smile. Oh, but maybe before I return to sender, I can do one thing worthwhile. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to raise a kind child. Sure would help if our boy went and got an MBA And took care of his artist mom and dad in their old age But let's face it, Wall Street probably isn't in his DNA But when his first grade teacher said she wanted us to know it's Jude who always comforts any kid who sits alone. There's just so much pride my heart can take. My retirement can wait. Cause I know better than to think I'll be remembered for a fortune or a pension or a prize. Oh, but maybe before I return to sender, I'll have done one thing worthwhile. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to raise a kind child. I don't want him to think the world is his to save. It's too much pressure anyway, can't be done. 
I don't want him to think he has to be a saint Cause the truth is saints don't have any fun Mostly I just hope my boy you'll come to understand No 401k or GPA can make a happy man It's having roots, doing good, helping out where you can some good take somebody's hand and you'll know better than most what really matters what makes living this life worthwhile and there may come a day your own kids will remember how their granddad used to say with a smile that he raised. We raised a kind child. Well, that was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> um, and, and you know, again, how things work out. Actually, that song placement was perfect because I just got talking done talking about generational and here he's talking about raising a kind child and how that moves forward. Um, so I love, I just love how these things <laughs> work. Okay, so how do we leave a legacy of love? Have you ever really consciously thought about that. How, how do we leave a legacy of love? So I'm going to ask you, do you wake up in the morning thinking, how can I change the world today? Or how can I impact the future for humanity? Or I wonder who's going to need my love today? I doubt that most of us wake up with those questions on our mind, but I'm going to suggest that we take this up as a practice. You know, seriously, can you imagine the impact of these questions leading our day and how that would impact our life and the life of others and how ultimately that would impact the whole? If only we just had these three questions, even one of these questions as our leading question. Wow, what a different world that we I'm not going to say would be living in, but that we will be living in because I'm going to hope that we will take up these questions as our leading questions for the day. You know, and here we are, we're in COVID-19, we're still in quarantine, but this doesn't even mean that we have to go out of our homes to create this impact. You know, I know that probably you have the television on or the radio on and you may come across things on there that are concerning to you. And in those moments, guess what? You can stop in those moments and you can pray and you can surround the person or the situation, whatever you're seeing happening with light and with love. We always have the opportunity to pray for our leaders and to pray for all leaders, to pray for our country, to pray for all countries, to pray for the world. We always have that opportunity. We have the opportunity to pray for people that we care about, you know, just like today holding uh, Linda Hilton in our love and in God's grace and comfort. We can take time throughout our day to meditate upon love, upon peace, upon truth, or you may just end up talking to somebody on the phone throughout the day that, that needs your listening ear, that needs a kind word, that needs your compassion. Again, you know, someone that may need you to hold them up in, in prayer. And here's the thing about that. These are the things, my friends, these are the things that create a legacy of love. When we are kind and compassionate to one person, it ripples out in ways, again, that we probably will never, ever see. But that's why it's a legacy, because it continues to be passed on and passed on and passed on. 
So in this class on mysticism, Reverend Tony shared this slide with us. And she was talking in the slide about DNA activation, but I realized that this, this right here is universal. This is kind of the experience of life that we have the opportunity to move into. So the first thing is about choice. And she says with, you know, we have to remember that we have free will. So we have to make the choice of yes. When we came into unity, when we came into new thought, we made the choice of yes. So the choice of yes could be something like, yes, I move into a conscious practice of awakening. Yes, that's my choice, is that I'm moving into a conscious practice of awakening. I'm, I move into a conscious practice of love and kindness and compassion. And from choice, we then move into the second part of this, which is intention, creating um, an intentional command, an intentional decree. And I love this because she says intention is what will help move us into a new grid of consciousness. And we've all experienced this, so we can all relate to that, that it does do that. We move into a new grid of consciousness. You know, I intend to awaken to greater truth. And she says that when we set intention, it creates greater clarity, greater purpose, and it creates movement. And again, we all know that. We've all worked with intentions. So I intend to awaken to a greater truth. When we set an intention, we are giving our higher selves, the universe, God, Holy Spirit, we are giving it a louder yes that we've made the choice, but now we're setting our intention. Um, and once that we make the choice and we set our intention, that um, initiates the, uh, well, starts, I should say, the initiation process in us, which is the next uh, step in this. And she says what this initiation process is, it's a stimulating, a stimulation of activating experiences that are now going to, going to invite us to higher levels of awareness. It is in this state, this stage, that we opportunities are, ex, ex, are showing up in our lives in which we have now the choice, based on our intention, to open our hearts and to really open our hearts um, in a way that ultimately is gonna move us into that heart, co that heart coherence. And from there, from this initiation stage, we are then move into the stage of activation. And she said in the stage of activation, we are simply just bringing in more life, bringing in more light, bringing in more life, bringing in more light. Because in that initiation stage, when these experiences are starting to come up, it will be easy for us to want to close down. So we want to keep bringing in the light. But then it's this next stage that I want to spend just a few minutes talking about because activation leads to purification. And deep purification is where we start to face our shadows. Um, and she says, uh, you know, as a group, we are in this purification stage as a collective consciousness, as a global collective consciousness. And in our lifetimes, we've never had a collective global consciousness purification before. And it's an interesting time because all kinds of stuff is coming up and all kinds of things are coming up that look kind of ugly to us. Um, and she said a lot of times this, this involves like the dark night of the soul and that what we're experiencing together is a dark night of the soul of our collective consciousness. And it is of utmost importance in this stage that we remember who we are, that we remember that we are first spiritual beings and we are having a physical experience. The physical is important, but the spiritual lays the foundation for our experience of whatever is happening in the physical world. And it is here in this purification stage that it is so important for us to turn within and to really, as Jesus said time and time again, to seek the kingdom of God. So about three months ago, something deep shifted in me. And I can't really explain it, um, except that I felt two things. One was that I needed to step back in a broader way and because so much was already happening and I and I needed to look things look at things from 
a much more spiritual perspective. And I just found myself kind of hanging out in that place, not really knowing what that meant, but I knew something deep in me had shifted. And um, then I saw that Reverend Tony Bain was going to do this two-hour class on mysticism, and it was for licensed teachers and ministers. And so, boy, I was just like, I'm on it. Well, I was immediately intrigued with this class. And in the midst of that class, I knew that I knew that I knew that that was exactly what I was being guided to in my journey. You know, I there was something in me that had made a choice that I was open to seeing this from a different perspective. Um, somehow this class helped me set that intention. And uh, the initiation began with the experience of actually moving into this eight-week class on mysticism. Well... And I love that this class because I'm able to share with you some of the things that I'm gleaning from this class. Well, throughout the course of the class, then um, the George Floyd thing happened where we saw literally the murder of George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey right before our eyes. And the veil got lifted and I could not unsee what I saw. I could not unknow what I now knew. And again, something shifted in me and I was moved into what I would call just a deeper state of humility. Um, because in that moment, in those moments of all that happening, I realized how much I didn't know. And what I do know is that I want to be part of the solution. I want to be part of this healing of our country and of our planet. And here's what I can tell you is that I can see that right now I am smack in the middle of my own purification stage with all of this. Because here's what's happening for me. I am looking at the shadows. I am looking at my stuff. I am looking at my beliefs. I am looking at my programming. I am looking at what makes me defensive, at what triggers my anger. And I want to tell you, I am working on my stuff. I am smack in the middle of this and I am working on my stuff. And it's not always easy. Uh, you know, I have to take a step back many times and, and you know, go within and breathe and, and allow that greater mind to help me in how to respond to something rather than to react to something. And I'm already experiencing some of the integration stage, which is pretty exciting because I can feel, and here's the thing for me, is I can feel this movement of being radically authentic. You know, Mitch mentioned earlier, you know, our, our mission statement is to be authentically all we came here to be. And most of you who know me know that I'm already a pretty authentic being, but I can feel that this is something deeper. It is different. It's taking me deeper and it's both an exhilarating feeling, but it's also a little bit scary because I know that as I move out in a more authentic way, that it's probably going to going to rattle some cages. But what I also know is that as a spiritual leader, my job is to rattle those cages. And what I absolutely know is that it's absolutely necessary that I follow, that I follow what is in me that is coming forth and that I follow our mission statement um, of our own ministry. So that moves us to the last stage, which is um, there will come a time when you do move out of purification and you move into integration. And there's three elements in integration. The first one is expansion. We feel this expansiveness. The second one is recalibration. And this is where we are embodying it, it now. We are living it. And the third aspect of this is alignment. And this is alignment into higher awareness. And the reality is, my friends, we go through these steps over and over again in our lives. But to do it globally is a whole new level of experience for us. And I want to say that we absolutely must know that what we are doing is making a difference. I know that we can easily go to that place of saying, you know, what, how, how is the energy that I'm emanating here is this little tiny piece in this grander scheme um, is that even really making a difference? And my absolute 100% response to that is yes, it is making a difference. And the visual I would use for you is think of candles. If we were in a dark room, a totally dark room, and one person lit a candle, there would be a little light. If another person lit a candle, there <clears throat> would be a little more light. But if 100 people light their candles, then that light is so much brighter. And 
That's why I want to say your candle matters. Your light matters. Your prayers matter. Your intentions matter. Your thoughts matter. Your meditations matter. Your actions matter. It absolutely does matter. And I have to admit to you that initially three months ago when I could feel that shift in me, I know that it was happening because there was, I was really vacillating between that place of feeling um, hopeful and of feeling worry about where we were and where we are. Because the reality is, is we are a divided nation and there has is a lot of hate um, that is going on. Um, but I have to tell you that I, I now feel so much more hopeful. And here's the thing for me, you and I, we may not ever realize the full effects, the ripple effects of our legacy of love, um, but that's not up to us. Our, you know, and I love in, in Daniel's song where he said maybe someday, you know, his great-grandchildren will say my great-grandpa cared enough to want to raise a kind child. That's the legacy of love um, that we, that we want to that we want to leave. And all that I know, again, and I hope you too, is that I want to be part of that. I want to be a part of that legacy of love. I don't need to be remembered for that. That's not important that our names are remembered. What's important is what is felt. You know, I want to add light to the darkness. I want to add hope to the hopeless. I want to add courage to the fearful. I want to add um, my oneness to all of the divisiveness. And I, I have to imagine, again, that if you're listening, that you also want to be a part of that. So I want to invite you today to make a choice. This is a, about as close to an altar call as you're going to get with me. But I want to invite you to make a choice today. I want to invite you to say yes to moving into a conscious practice of awakening. And if you would like to say this with me, I say yes to moving into a conscious practice of awakening. I want to invite you to create an intention. It could be, and you can change these, but I intend to awaken and say this with me. I intend to awaken to the greater truth and I will participate in the spiritual awakening of the world. By decreeing our intention, experiences are going to be initiated. We activate them by bringing in more light, bringing in more life. In purification, we are willing to be open to seeing our stuff, to let go of our erroneous beliefs, to release our old programming, and to open up to the greater truth. And then we joyfully experience the integration of our choice intention into our daily lives. Lastly, I want to encourage you to at least take one of these questions, if not all three, and let them be the questions of the meditations of your heart when you wake up in the morning. I'm sorry, I need to go back to that. <laughs> let me go back to that slide. How can I change the world today? How can I impact the future for humanity? And I wonder who's going to need my love today. Those three questions will change your life and they will change the direction of where we are going in our world today. I This is just in my own words, but a small group of committed people can and will change the world. And I invite you, all of you, let's all be that small group of committed people who are willing to do what is ours to do from that spiritual perspective to get us over this tipping point to create a world that truly works for all of us. You matter. You are important. And I say thank you for taking up this grand call. And I say to you, namaste. Thank you so much. So now we are going to um, move into this time of giving. And this is our opportunity to support this ministry with our donations, with our tithes, our love offerings. There's many ways that you can give to our ministry. You can go to our website and uh, unityofspringfield.org and you can give there. You can go 
download our Tithely app and you can give from that. You can give through PayPal at ccunity at sbcglobal.net and you can mail a check to 2214 East Seminole, Springfield, Missouri, 65804. And we thank you, all of us, because we're all part of this giving uh, for supporting this ministry in the wonderful ways that you do. And now we're going to listen to Daniel do another wonderful song for us. And this one, um, I think this one is called um, Last Song, which is... Whew, Fabulous, fabulous song. Here's Mr. Daniel. So, quick thank you to John. Quick thank you to Sue. Oh, wait, wrong one. Uh, and all my friends and familiar faces in Springfield. Truly a lovely community. Uh, wishing you all the best. One more song. I'm going to keep it a little quiet for both of these songs. I hope that's okay. Um, but obviously there's a lot going on right now in the world, and not a lot of it is quiet. Um but I also feel like not a lot of it feels manageable. And this song, I know that uh, many of you have heard me sing it before. Uh, and it is all about keeping the pressure off. Making today be about today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. Putting my head on the pillow tonight, knowing that I did my best and that my best today is enough. That's an elusive feeling in a world that looks like it needs so much to change. It can feel like nothing we could do individually could ever make a difference. The truth is every day, everything we do makes that difference or doesn't. And our lives are, in fact, operating on a small scale, but collectively doing the thing we dream of humanity doing. We are all doing it. This is what it looks like. Individually, day by day, we make these choices. And they are small, manageable choices to do the good that's right in front of us to do to be kind to the person right in front of us, to tell the truth right in front of us, to give the dollar, to give the hug, to open our homes, open our hearts. This is the work of changing the world. So, a small song about small good that adds up to something much more than that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me. See you in person, hopefully, sometime soon. Stay well.
Thank you, Daniel. And again, I love that uh, how things work. I always say that, that I hadn't listened to that yet. And everything he said in the beginning was exactly in support of the talk today. And I, I love that so much. So thank you, Daniel. I encourage you go to his website, make a donation to him in gratitude for what he has given us would just be wonderful. Um, just a few announcements, just a reminder that our little library is a, sm a small food pantry. Every so often we're out of food, so if you'd wanna take some food by there, just go ahead and put it in the pantry itself. We do have a hold on our uh, donations for our indoor yard sale for now. The Abraham Group meets, sorry, meets on um, Saturdays at noon to 2 p.m. That information will be on our, this Facebook page. Uh, the Sunday New Thought uh, World Religion class uh, this next week is going to be James Masters, and he's going to be talking about what's in the mirror, how to love yourself. And if you didn't get to watch this morning's with Paul Day, uh, he he did a 2,052-mile bike ride uh, five years ago, and he shares this beautiful adventure on that, beautiful pictures, and the spiritual journey. So I encourage you to watch that. Um, always, our Sunday celebration is here at 11. Wednesday, Renewal, we're talking about spiritual economics, uh, at this point anyway, and that is on Zoom, and that information will be there for you as well. Daily Word Launch Uplift, try to do that every day. I know I missed Friday, I just totally forgot. Um, and then don't forget about our kiddos. Our Uniteens and Teens meet on Zoom on Sundays at 1045 and again on Wednesdays at 545 and at 1215. Rachel Willis who will be on our Unity of Springfield Youth and Families group page to um, to uh, share with our younger kids. I encourage you to watch that. So let's end with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and truly all is well. And I'm going to have us do that one more time, and I just want you to, to take that energy out to the whole world as we say this for the whole world. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and truly 
all is well. So we're gonna close today with our I'm Alive with the Spirit of God. This is a great song just to remind us how important it is to really sink into that, that we are here to be God expressing. Uh, I hope more so today that you've deepened into that. You're ready to go out and you're ready to really make that positive difference in the world. So here we go. Stand up. Get your bodies ready to move. I am alive with the Spirit of God. I am alive with the Spirit of God. One, here we go. Yeah. to our band. Thank you so much, Daniel Namod. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you so much. Thank you to everybody who is here today. We love you. We miss you. And I say to you, namaste.